man. Everyone is just like, have you ridden a Buell? Have you ridden a Buell? Have you ridden a Buell? And I'm just like, no, man, what's the big deal? It's just a Sportster. Oh my God. What's up, weirdo? Shay Tree Surgeon here. And today, me and Shay Lisi are riding out on two green 2001 Sportster. Same color, same year. But let me tell you what, two very, very different bikes, that's for sure. What's happening? I heard you say you were leaking a mysterious fluid. It would only be mysterious if it wasn't leaking anything. <laughs> You'll be fine. Mm, not my precious fluids. Mm -mm. I'll have to say that Lectron starts a lot better than the CV, that's for sure. <laughs> who honks? We're going. This kid's on bikes. All right, you got to tell me who did it better, Shay Lisi or Shade Tree Surgeon. We got freaking long, tall, and lanky 883, and we got the uh, short, stubby 1200 over there. Two very different motorcycles for two very very different purposes that's for sure we got styling and profiling over there and uh this thing right here <laughs> the dirtster old dirty bastard this motorcycle uh, it might not look very good but i'll tell you it's all business oh take it easy holy mackerel <laughs> it's so aggressive for not really moving. All right, heading up to a joint we haven't been to in a minute. And uh, shame on us for not going here for a little bit because let me tell you, Born Free, that's a bar that helps us out a lot, man. And a whole lot of people coming to town always end up going here because Born Free is a bar that always provides all the beer for the Forgotten Angels campouts. Dean at Born Free, I've had him on the channel before. He's absolutely a hell of a guy. Moved over here from Pakistan to become a doctor. Uh, decided he wanted to play rock and roll instead. <laughs> Disappointed his parents, but he made some amazing music and now he opened up a biker bar here in Tampa. What a freaking awesome story. And we're heading up to Born Free to meet up with the only guy that can get me to deliver a shirt personally because uh, almost no one else can do that. And when it comes to the Brapstar t-shirts, <laughs> well, I'm always just like ordered off the website, baby, or sometimes we do events, you can buy one there. But when my man Erm asks you, it's like <laughs> only he can get away with it. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, you got the dirt bike out? <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Good to see you, brother. Shocker, somebody's running out of gas. <laughs> oh, is it a freaking ride with a couple of sportsters if somebody hasn't had to go on reserve? All right, got Shay Lisi dropped off at the house and I'm meeting Shelby up at Brapstar Garage because I still have to change the intake seals on this bike, even though it really is running fine at low RPMs. At the top of the rev range, I'm still getting an intake leak and it's affecting performance. Oof, definitely got to do the Monty Python high kick to freaking get on this thing. And the old Sportster goes zero to ramming speed and, uh, yeah, it takes a minute. <laughs> and because of that intake leak, like once I started to get to the top end, I just got absolutely nothing. Down low, running like a freaking champ though. That is a good looking charger, man. And hell yeah. I mean, the whole point of this trip, the whole point of the Trans-American Trail is to take back roads and off highway stuff the whole way there. Like it's not off road the entire way. There's gonna be points of it where you're on the road, but the point is to stay off of highways completely. And uh, ooh, this sport, I gotta tell you, it's happy, like it's happiest top speed is about 65 miles an hour. It'll go faster than that if you ask it politely, but it's anything above 65 and it's not the happiest motorcycle in the world. I, I was hoping I was gonna get it to take highways out of Florida just to get out of Florida fast, but I don't know about that. I'm gonna be asking a lot for this little bike. All right, talk about a piece of motorcycle history. One Buell Thunderbolt in 1998. So this is not the fuel and frame. This is really, really early Eric Buell era. And it belongs to one Shelby Daytona now. 
<laughs> and so this is not just any, now this is a, was a touring model at one point, uh, or I guess the touring model is all it really had was a place to put bags, but, he's bag. and he's got the bags, which you never find those for these bikes. But this is just, you know, classic Eric Buell when he first started doing this stuff. Like he, these were some of the first bikes he ever made, right? Yeah. Obviously he worked on the FXR and other Harley Davidson projects, but this was it. This was his, one of his first offerings for something that he created for Harley Davidson. So it uses all sorts of weird stuff that are just cobbled together from Harley's parts catalog. Like it's a 1998, it has a Sportster motor, but it is rubber mounted. And it, Shelby tells me it uses the same isolators from baggers. So it's got a bagger isolator in the front and the same bagger isolators in the rear. It's got the underslung shock that works like a soft tail shock. This is ain't any Buell. Maybe we, Shelby's not even sure, but uh, whatever these marks are, maybe someone you guys know. But the story behind this is this has had the cases out, the gears back cut, the cases bored, and the largest cylinders you can put on a Sportster with bored cases. So whatever it has, we don't even know. But David said that he couldn't keep on keep up with it or he couldn't pull away from it on a 160 horsepower Kawasaki Concourse. So whatever's going on in this motor, it's something special. <laughs> and I don't know, but the, the, the bees almost look like Brembo. They're not, I mean, they're not, right? I, mean, I don't I've even know what those are. Before. Huh. Well, only one way to find out. Let's take it for a spin. So you said he was in his 80s, right? 83, and he would only sell it to a tech or someone who would appreciate it. Weird. You said it has Firebolt heads. Firebolt heads, yeah. And yeah. and polished Firebolt heads, back cut gears, but Shelby's never even seen that mark. Someone in the someone in the comments will have seen it because there's so many people watching. But it's weird that you haven't. All right, believe it or not, this is my very first time ever riding a Buell. Uh, well, I guess I rode a Buell Blast, but we won't count that. Ooh. There goes David. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, Shelby wasn't kidding. He says it'll feel like the transmission is slipping. It goes, it accelerates so hard. It does. It feels like the train is slipping, but it is not. Oh my God. I didn't even know. I did not know a Sportster motor could feel like this. And I haven't even opened it up past quarter throttle yet. We'll tell you already. This feels like no Sportster I have ever ridden in my life. I think I'm finally getting it. Everyone is just like, have you ridden a Buell? Have you ridden a Buell? Have you ridden a Buell? And I'm just like, no, man, what's the big deal? It's just a Sportster. Oh my God. This is not just a Sportster. Holy mackerel. <laughs> what is this? Oh my God. This doesn't seem real. How is this the same Evo motor that's an old dirty bastard? This does not seem possible. Whoa. What in the hell? This is, this should not be allowed. This motorcycle is straight up dangerous and I like it. How is this a Harley, how is this a Sportster motor? Impossible. Anybody who thought this was just a Sportster, what in the hell, man? They would never see this thing coming. Not in a million freaking years, dude. This motorcycle is insane. This thing should not be allowed. <laughs> Whoa. Eric Buell, the guy knew what he was doing. Ooh, wow. I mean, I don't know how fast an original Thunderbolt was, if it was as fast as this thing is, but this motorcycle is out of control. I have never ridden an Evo motor that felt like this. Wow, man. I want one. That's a cool bike. Holy shit. What the f is that? I've never ridden an Evolution motor that felt like that. Not that I've spent that much time on Evos before, but I've ridden a ton of Sportsters. I've ridden a bunch of freaking Evos. I have never in my life been like an evolution, even thought that it could feel like that. <laughs> it just revs. 
It revs so fast and so easy and accelerates so freaking hard. It feels as fast as the 131. It's a much smaller bike and it weighs a lot less, but it feels as fast as the 131. Oh, it's so cool, dude. I didn't even know a sports truck could, motor could do that. <laughs> Which I'm sure is what everybody says when they get out of Buell. Well, I've never put a full over your five kit. We gotta build one now. <laughs> I'm just like, no way, now we gotta do one. You have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. So Shelby found another one. So Shelby's full of, so first off, my fuel line was kinked. Second off, so Shelby's just like picking this thing apart that I put together like bit by bit. And then he goes, uh, yeah, you let this breather tube melt closed. And I'm just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Not exactly batting a thousand here when it comes to the master tech inspection, okay? Of course, when whenever you work on stuff yourself and it comes to the Shelby inspection, nobody gets away scot-free, okay? <laughs> Everyone's gotta pay the piper. And the Piper's name is Shelby. Come here, where's your nose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the other thing you want to do when you cut the hose like this, like, uh -huh. like a breather rent or something like that, 45 degree angle. Oh, so if that happens again, it doesn't seal it closed? Well, so also that and dirt doesn't like really seal it up or anything going like that. Wow, it makes sense. It's almost like you've seen that, what you just described happened before. Yeah. So we've moved from vacuum leaks to fuel lines being kinked to now Shelby goes, and your spark plug wires are screwed. <laughs> what was wrong with the Sportster? Everything. Basically. I'm really glad you're looking at this before I decided to ride it across the country. Now this is an old school die. But. They make pliers for this kind of shit, but. Looks like it got the job done to me. All right, it's yet another day. We're taking off. Uh, <laughs> didn't actually finish. Didn't actually finish working on the Sportster, so I'm on Barf Vader, the giveaway PC800 over here. You can't ever finish working on a Sportster. <laughs> That's true. And we're with our good friend Mike. Mike's the man, and let me tell you, if you want some stories, Mike's got some stories. But that's an episode for another day. For today, let's get a beer. Elise over here goes, we're about to, she pulls out her camera and goes, we're about to have a dad adventure to Pacific Coast out on the prowl with Dr. Dad on the Harley over here. And all of a sudden I go, have you tried starting that thing? Because... <laughs> It ain't going. Luckily, we've got Barf Vader, the giveaway Pacific Coast, which I was going to ride, but she at least you'll jump on that now. And uh, I'm not crying too hard because that means I get to ride the VMAX, baby. Oh, yeah. That automatic choke, man. It's got some high speed stuff on it for being a bike from the 80s. Well, it's a 98, but it ain't changed much since the 80s. Yeah. I don't mind riding the VMAX. I love riding on this bike with a freaking squared off flat rear tire, needs new neck bearings, ignition coils are all jacked up. Everything that's wrong with it that makes it just a sketchy machine, brakes barely work, but let me tell you what, that 120 horsepower V4, that thing still rips. Dang, where's Shay Lisi go on Barth Vader? Dude, that is a... I don't care, man. You know, obviously the VMAX is a badass bike, but those Pacific Coast 800s, those are such cool vehicles, man. That's just like a, a, a everyday grocery getter, a cross country tour. That's why my, my ignition coil start to give out. <laughs> Everything all at once. Man, for 25 bucks, 100% of it going to charity, of course, for 25 bucks, somebody's taking that thing home. We're gonna fly your ass out to Tampa to party with us and ride around, have some beers, a couple nights of debauchery. Then we're gonna give your drunk, hungover ass enough gas money to get your butt back home, and you're gonna take off from that Pacific coast on a dad adventure, baby. I've got no mirrors either. I'm like, I don't know what's happening behind me. That's what the good thing about the VMAX with no mirrors is it doesn't matter if a cop's behind you because it's fast enough to get away. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the Ranger too. That was nice having a nice car. <laughs> having a nice car, having a nice bike. <laughs> I wonder what that's like. <laughs> At least we got to have it for a little while. <laughs> I know, back in the dumpster where we belong. No more nice stuff. Well, I mean, the Pacific Coast is pretty nice. But when I say the PC800, the, the Barf Vader over there, the black one, when I say that's nice, that's like, you know, Brapstar nice. As opposed to this VMAX, which is not even Brapstar nice. This thing is just sketchy. Uh-oh, the fuzz. Uh, so technically, two thirds of the motorcycles that are in our group right now have illegal plates on them. <laughs> <laughs> Play it cool. All right, heading up to Social House. Maybe we'll get to hang out with Marcus because Fox and Spider is right next to it. But man, last time we tried to come to Social House, they were doing a remodeling. So they got a 
grand reopening sign up now and you guys know that social house is one of our uh, one of our top places that we love to go when they're not showing sports anyway Sonic oh my gosh sonic all-stars basketball the wait is finally over truffle fries guacamole fried cheese and beer of course <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what, man. Uh, I've learned that sometimes, if you look at the size of me, you wouldn't think that my eyes were bigger than my stomach, but that's how I got here. Hey, they got plantains everywhere? Or is that just a Florida thing? Plantains, it looks like a banana, but it's also like potato chip when you fry it. Delicious. Oh, no, it's doing better for you than a potato chip. <laughs> I think it's so bad for you. Dr. Dad over here goes, you gotta try one of these. I was like, I'm trying to eat light and not eat the cheese. I shouldn't. I couldn't. I could not possibly try one of these. Mm. Holy crap, dude. What is that sauce? It's like a jalapeno sweet sauce. Dude, I'm glad I didn't get that. <laughs> so, oh my God. We're about to leave here at Social House when worlds collide, okay? This is bar meets YouTube meets friends. Uh, my man. Crossover episode. <laughs> a crossover episode from the bar. My man Ethan here, who's our Budweiser rep, our Pepin rep, who uh, handles a lot of our beer orders but also watches the channel and is also a good friend. You know, I always say there's three degrees of separation in Tampa. That's it. From just about anybody. Anyway, thanks, Ethan. Good times at Social House. Good food. They just, their grand reopening. Um, they say they're just trying to do better, but we never had a bad time before, so I don't know what they're trying to do better from, but I'm hey. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My Dr. Dad's got it. I'm trying to do worse, too. All right, so Elise's going to take the Pacific Coast 800 back home and meet us up at the shop, and uh, let's go try and finish the freaking Sportster. I decided I'm going to stop smoking weed for good. I'm smoking weed for evil now. Oh, hell yeah. Hey. I'll tell you this, VMAX probably has... No business at all being on the highway, but here we go. Oh, I say no business being on the highway, and then a hoo hoo. Oh, that gets wobbly real quick, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, this thing is uh, dangerous on the highway, baby. Blown fork seals, bad neck bearings. If it can be wrong, it is. This motorcycle has no business being on the highway right now. Everything's wrong with it. <laughs> Shimmy in a little bit. Oh, yeah, dude. Ah, it is what it is. <laughs> Y'all need a death trap. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, God would never hurt me, right? Like I always say, <laughs> God loves an idiot. There's no other explanation for why I'm still alive. Well, that's uh, about where it ended at the shop because he and Dr. Dad started to work on the Sportster and then Erm showed up and then Arab Honey showed up and then all of a sudden, instead of doing any work, we got really, really, really drunk. I regret nothing. It was an excellent time and, you know, I still take time to have a few beers with my friends instead of work on the bike, although I really need to work on the bike. I am actually running out of time. I'm supposed to take that motorcycle on a cross-country adventure uh, in like less than two weeks. Mind you, I still haven't actually taken that motorcycle off road yet. So, um, yeah, I really need to get on that. Ah, you guys know how I do it. Everything will be fine, right? Well, if it isn't fine, we'll just make it fine. It's uh, like with the chopper build, you know? I broke stuff and was making welds literally the night before I left on a 1200 mile chip on, trip on a hardtail chopper. So, you know, <laughs> what, me, worry? Nah, it'll be fine. I think. Maybe. Well, there's only one way to find out if it's going to be fine or not. That's to just go ahead, jump in feet first, and send it. This video is coming out Sunday, May 15th. We got lots of big stuff coming up this week. We got people coming into town. We got bike giveaways. We got the market at the shame. We've got Natalie Cuomo's stand up at Side Splitters. It's going to be a really freaking good time. I hope you guys are out here for it. It's all starting on Saturday at Natalie Cuomo's uh, stand up show at Side Splitters. I'm going to have a link where you can buy tickets down below. We're gonna ride there from Burt's Barracuda. Natalie is a rider as well. She's freaking hilarious. If you saw the live stream we did with her, really, really cool people. We're gonna do her podcast, the 
this Thursday coming up. We've got the Rats and Raff Market on Sunday, and that's the day that we're giving away the, <laughs> the Barf Vader, the Pacific Coast, the giveaway bike. That's not just are you gonna win a bike if you win that, but 100% of that money goes to charity. We got, that's a $25 ticket, but it's gambling for a good cause. We are bad people doing good things because 100% of that money, I don't touch a single freaking penny, 100% of that money goes directly to Forgotten Angels Benefit Children who have aged out of the foster care system. These are the guys we do the camp out with. They're amazing people. It's for an amazing cause. And hey, it's a pretty cool bike. And whoever wins it, we're gonna fly your ass to Tampa. We're gonna, if you wanna get a tattoo, we'll get you tattooed. We'll get you drunk. We'll go out, we'll ride around, and then we'll give you enough gas money to limp your hungover ass back home. We're gonna have other prizes that we're giving away Sunday at the Rats and Wrath Market at Dirty Shame. So make sure you show up to that and show some support. We also got other guests coming into town. I, uh, you know, when you get tagged on Instagram and someone says they're your biggest fan, when they said biggest fan, uh, what she really meant was tallest fan. So <laughs> we've got one blissful Ellie. Ellie's about six foot 10 in heels. So uh, needless to say, She's coming to Tampa. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is a bad idea for her or a bad idea for me, but strangers meeting off the internet, it hasn't gone bad for me yet, so what's the worst that could happen? Anyway, make sure you keep an eye out for her at the Rats and Wrath Market and Natalie Cuomo show as well, because she's gonna be down here hanging with us, and uh, I think we might even talk David into teaching her how to ride a motorcycle, because she, you know, she seems awful eager to. Links for everybody that I've talked about for the tickets to Natalie Cuomo show, for the tickets for the raffle bike, and links to Blue for Ellie's Instagram page, all in the description down below. It's going to be an awesome weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys, and I really need to get the Sportster done, but I can't resist a good party. So let's party. See you guys there, and until next time, keep it weird. Sunshine, lollipops, and green booze, everything. That's wonderful is what I feel